my pleasure to introduce to one of our black belts, Doug McNew, and he has a fight scene here with you this afternoon. demonstrated by the black belt candidates is a beginning level of top keto. These guys are really proficient. They've studied the first 444 movements out of 3,808. Okay? Doug's been around a little longer. You see a difference in the way he moves. Not that what they're doing is wrong. It's just a little more evolved way of moving in top keto. The motion of the black belt candidates will be larger, bigger circles. A little more overt movement. Doug's movement is going to be a little more subtle. His movement will be closer to his body. And it's going to be a little harder to see what's going on. So, if you wouldn't mind, after you've done your thing, I'd like to explain it to you. Okay. Of a punch, but the subtlety of that is that Ron was standing on one foot and off balance just because of the way Doug let his momentum move. So it was very, very easy after he kicked him a couple of times in a couple of pressure point areas in his knee and his thigh to push him into Mike and knock them both down. It's, it's a way of folding movement together when you have more than one attack. When you get to Doug's level, it's a lot more fun to fight three people than it is to fight one because there's so many more possibilities. Next. At this point, Phil's getting choked out. Soft block, Doug closed the distance on Phil. He crossed the small part of his arm onto the arteries and nerves on the side of Phil's neck. When he squoes down, it only takes a few seconds for Phil to start to lose consciousness and no longer be a factor. Controlling Mike's wrist and connecting that to the center of his body and the movement that he was giving him already. All Doug did was move with Mike and created an opportunity to keep flipping Mike over and over. When you have this kind of connection with the skill level that Doug has, he could do this all afternoon. The guy that's doing all the work is the one that's hitting the mat, not the guy that's allowing it to happen. points there are obvious on the <laughs> <laughs> Doug's just fancy enough to be able to turn it over like that. So. I'm presented with lethal force and a multiple attack. The hop ketos will often return it. We have a lot of different levels of force we can return. The deadly force is being presented. There's more than one attacker. A lot of the time we go to the deadly force and, and match it. So Phil just died there. He had this carotid artery cut. And what you didn't see was the long stab that he took as it was coming through. These knife motions, Doug is proficient enough with these that even though the knife 
is in Mike's hand. Last motion. Eleven. We've got Doug sees it as his weapon, not Mike's weapon. Even as he stabs overhand, Doug can use the blade itself to turn Mike over. Present vital spot. As he escapes, so Mike and I just show him what the blade is. Okay. As he escapes, the blade's in Doug's hand anyway on the hilt because he was always going to use it. Just because it was in Mike's hand didn't mean it didn't belong to him the whole time. Doug's going to close the distance block, close, take the stab, and what you might not have seen was he cut Ron's throat at the same time. A little more brutal than I would have done. <laughs>